365. Are you an artist, producer, engineer, or music professional that's looking for funding for your music career? Could you benefit from having funding for studio time, mixing and mastering, or even marketing costs? I think I have something for you. I've written a free ebook, it's nine pages, super short and digestible, where I break down the six main places that artists and professionals like yourself can find funding for their musical projects. If this sounds like it's of value to you, please click the link below and you can download this for free today and benefit from this knowledge. I hope this helps. I'll see you guys soon. Peace. Five. What's going on ladies and gentlemen, this is your boy Five Piece producer and engineer extraordinaire and as you may have noticed, I've decided to switch it up and do something a little bit different from my typical mixing tutorials. In fact, we're going to talk today about music grants and getting funding for your music. Now this is going to be especially helpful for all the Canadians that follow my account. As you know, I'm based in Toronto and Canada has a lot of free funding available to music creators. Now before we dive into this, I wanted to ask you to please subscribe and hit the bell button on the video so you can stay tuned for more videos in the future. I'm going to be talking about a lot of things, more mixing stuff of course, but even more topics like this and finding funding for your career. Let's get into this. Myth number one, grant organizations only fund their friends. Now this is actually not possible and it has to do with how grant organizations work. Grant organizations do not review applications themselves. Instead, what they do is they hire or require a bunch of volunteers to join the organization as a juror and review applications on their behalf. What these jurors do is they receive the applications from the grant organization, and then they get to read the plan, listen to the music, and examine the artist to see where they are in their career, and ultimately assign their application a grade, similar to how a teacher grades a homework assignment. Now what happens is these jurors turn the application in after it's been graded, of course, and the grant organization gathers all of these application reviews and looks at them and basically assigns an average score to each grant. From there, the grant app organization decides, okay, maybe the top you know, 15% of applications will get funded, and it's always gonna depend on what funding is available that season. So some seasons they may be funding applications that have an 85% average and up, maybe it's a 73% average and up, but it all just depends on that season and the competition that's going on at that time. Now, jurors specifically cannot review applications from people that they know personally. Grant organizations do not want this to happen because this could lead to bias, favoritism, or maybe the exact opposite and have somebody grading an application from somebody that they're not personally fond of, which could then skew the results. So when this happens, a juror, if they you know, get an application from somebody that they personally know, they're supposed to tell the grant organization that they know this person, and the grant organization would then hand that application off to another juror who doesn't personally know them or make some sort of arrangement where that juror is not gonna review the application personally. Myth number two, grants only fund specific artists. Tell me if you've thought about this before. Maybe you've thought, well, I make hip hop music. They ain't gonna fund me. You know what I mean? Grants only fund folk music and rock music. Now, this could be true to some degree. I can see why someone would think this and that's probably because in Canada, at least, folk and rock music have a longer history it's more uh, ingrained into our culture we've had this for hundreds of years whereas hip-hop is a relatively new and young genre right now in saying that obviously people's tastes have changed and a lot of people love hip-hop myself included so i could tell you right now that grants do not only fund specific artists from specific genres how do i know that well i make hip-hop and guess what I've won a grant. So obviously they do fund hip hop projects. And even when you look at lists of who they fund, you'll see that a lot of Canadian hip hop artists are funded by these grants. So don't be worried thinking that grant organizations won't fund your project because you make a specific type of music. They will fund anything, including instrumental music that doesn't have any vocals, hip hop, R&B, country, electronica, whatever it is you make, you can apply for a grant. All you have to do is convince them that your project is worth funding and that you make music that's of a certain quality, particularly a good quality. So you have to be really talented in the genre that you work in. Myth number three, grants can be used to buy studio equipment for your project studio. This is actually false and I learned this one really early on. Most grants do not give money away to build a studio, to fund equipment purchases and things of that nature. The only time that you may be able to do that is if you get a business grant and the only way to get a business grant is to have a business and have a plan of how you're going to buy that equipment and turn that into money and revenue for yourself. 
Now, music grants, they don't want to do that. They just want to fund projects and getting projects created. So you could do things like rent equipment. That's absolutely a totally cool expense. But if you're trying to buy a new synth or a new mic, they will not allow you to spend the grant money on that. And in fact, if you do that and claim it, your grant will probably become recoupable. It'll become a loan, basically. They'll add interest, and then you'll have to pay them back because that is not an eligible expense. So you wanna make sure whenever you do get a grant, you look at the eligible expenses and make sure that you're able to spend money on that thing specifically. And I can guarantee that equipment is usually not gonna be an allowable expense. Myth number four. I need a grant writer to apply to a grant. Now, this is definitely not true, and I know this because I've applied to a grant. I'm not officially a grant writer, although maybe now I could be, but I've applied to many grants, and I've actually won them as well, without having any previous knowledge of grant writing or even working with a grant writer directly. Now, a grant writer is great because they can save you some time. They're familiar with the grant writing process. They usually know what the grant organizations want to see, and they can help you structure your application so that it's very strong and fundable. However, a grant writer comes with a fee always. You always have to pay them in advance. Sometimes you have to pay them a retainer. It all depends on your arrangement with that grant writer. They may even take a piece of your grant. And this is troublesome because you may actually not win the grant and you would still have to pay the grant writer for their services. Furthermore, a lot of grant organizations actually don't like it when artists and individuals use grant writers because they want to fund artists directly. They do not want to pay the salary of a grant writer and let them do what they need to do to win you the funding. So you can use a grant writer, it can make things a lot easier for you. However, you do not need a grant writer to actually win the funding. Myth number five, a grant organization won't fund my project because I'm not from the same country. What if I told you that another country could fund your project if you were to set it up the right way? When we think about grants, grant organizations, specifically in Canada, want to fund Canadian projects. They want to fund Canadian citizens and allow them to make the music they want to make and ultimately take this money that they're given and reinvest it into the Canadian economy. Now, if you're an artist from another location, you could technically get a grant from a Canadian organization, but you do have to spend the money the way that they want you to spend the money and you have to make sure that your project meets certain criteria. For example, they want to fund content that is Canadian content or CanCon for short. CanCon has four distinct uh, components of it being Maple, M-A-P-L. M stands for the music is made by a Canadian. A is the artist is Canadian, the performing artist. P means the performance was in Canada, so it was recorded in Canada. And then L means the lyrics were written by a Canadian. Now, in order for a grant proposal to be fundable, it needs to be at least 50% CanCon. So you could technically be an American artist or European artist and apply for Canadian funding as long as you have a project that is at least 50% CanCon. So that means, you know, maybe you've recorded it in Canada and it's produced by a Canadian. Maybe the lyrics are written by a Canadian and it's recorded in Canada, right? Obviously, if you're the artist, the A cannot be Canadian. You're obviously not Canadian, but you can maybe also get Canadian features and help that justify your project. So you don't need to be from a country to get the grant funding. However, it's gonna work against you a little bit because they will prefer to fund Canadian artists. However, it is not impossible. So hopefully me pointing out these five myths, each of them are ones that I believed as well. Hopefully me pointing them out has helped you realize that you can get a grant, that it is possible to get funding for your project, whether you're in Canada or outside in another country that also has government funding available to you. If you got value out of this video, please like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. This video is applicable to every kind of music creative there is, whether you're you know in the business, if you're on the management side, or if you're a producer, grant funding is available to all kinds of creatives and it's free money for you to use in your career. So there's no reason why you shouldn't explore it. I hope this helped guys. See you guys soon. Peace out. Five.